Okay, we're going to close out uh, today's session with Costas with eight or more steps to making your next assembly dem demo. Uh, welcome, Costas. Hello, uh, I'm uh, Navis from ASD. Uh, I've been here many times before. This is my, I think, seventh time. And uh, we always try to bring something uh, to the big scene. We normally do a big demo every summer. And this is uh, another time that we decided to do something for uh, this year's uh, assembly. Usually, we... We spend uh, the winter researching what we're going to do and then spend the, the summer putting everything together. Um, uh, one way to do this is to say, uh, okay, we're going to say we need something to back the, the, the aesthetic, so we need some sort of the technology that we develop over the, the winter, one or two special effects. And then in the spring, we think of the, of the story, we write the music, and then we put everything together in, uh, for, the, for the summer deadline. Now, you may ask, okay, what, what is an effect? What's, what's usually effect? Uh, forgetting about uh, aesthetics, forgetting about what an, what an effect will actually look like uh, um, when the demo is done in the summer, we, we try to think of something that people will see and will remember, something that, that stands out something that will be the core for what we are trying to do with uh, the aesthetics. Or it could be a combination of, of something that already exists and it's, uh, or something that's, that's quite new. It's, uh, it's quite unknown up to this point, but by, by watching many, many demos over the year, then you get an idea of what new and what impressive could be. Uh, and this is this is a very important important part of of, of making it uh, making the demo happen. It's it's a foundation you, because then we can unify these effects and put a story together. And there are famous demos, including our demos, uh, that are uh, rely on one or two effects. So to give you an example, maybe you know of uh, Five Faces, a demo from Fairlight uh, from a couple of years ago that. Uh, really really nice demo where it features ray tracing and breaking up of things so in that example ray tracing is a means to achieve something which is to progress the story to show you things and then breaking up something is another means to progress the story without these two elements what what would the demo mean it would be empty even though it might have a a, a nice backing story uh, we stand divided a recent demo from uh, cocoon that uh, you remember because of the photorealistic rendering. If you take that away, then it may feel like an empty shell. Also, our demo from 2011 that actually won this competition, it featured line tracing and line tracing and pseudo particles. These two things was, was what uh, put the demo together. Everybody remembers that as oh, is, this, is this demo where you trace the lines and where you do uh, things with that looks like particles. If these didn't. If these weren't there, then the demo would be, again, empty. So for 2005, uh, 2015, I wish it was 2005, uh, two, I was actually here in 2005, and it was a very, very different uh, environment back then. For 2015, we have two different effects. Uh, the one is a, an exploration of the particle system a little bit more, and of edge tracing a little bit more. So you may say, OK, you, what are you doing? You are selling us the same idea again and again. But you'll wait and see, because it's, it's slightly different this time. So when I say I'm going to make some new particles, some, some people who are, that are much better uh, than me at this will say, ah, yes, this is, this is never going to work. And they will laugh. And it's, this is not new, new things what I'm going to show you. And maybe other people can make it much better. But I think that the secret is how you bring everything together. It's not just doing it. We may do it more slow, or it may need more memory resources, or it might crash at some cards. Who knows? But it's, the secret is not there. The secret is how you bring it, bring it together. So we, 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 try to, we choose a different path. So it, this is not a demo about technology, as I said. This is a, a demo about feelings and things things to show that speak to your heart, but how you do it, you need to have something 
as a foundation, and foundation has to be technology because it's a demonstration, it's a demo, it's a demonstration of the computer's ability to do something. We, could, we can make it with lines and symbol polygons, but we have done that. We have, we have done, I think, something like 35 demos in our, our history. So uh, each time we, find, we need to find a new way to back the story. And this is it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about these new particles. Um, I thought, let's make a demo that is all made out of particles. You may say, OK, other people have done it before. But I wanted to make something where even the, the symbol forms that is the triangle, is made out of um, particles, and it's rendered as such, very, very many small particles. But this way, it gives us the ability to do effects that at least I haven't seen before. So there is a one big texture that holds the position and the normals and maybe colors of a, of a mesh. A mesh could be something uh, quite, quite simple, like a, I wouldn't say a cube or a sphere, but uh, let's say a man walking or something like that. So if you take a triangle and then you rasterize it, there are many ways that you could do it. You could, you could do it so that it's line rasterized like that, or you can do something where it's like a spiral. So you rasterize from outside and you go inside. What do you gain from that? If you just render this, it would be just triangles. It would look like a normal flat shading polygon. That's not very interesting. But what you can do is that for as you are tracing the triangle, either this way or this way, uh, you can uh, have a, um, a theta, a value, a value that goes from zero for outside to one from inside, and then you can phase delay transitions. You can do effects with that. I'm going to show you later um, a couple of videos about this, but I'm going to keep it for later because I don't want to mess up with the... Uh, I'm not really good with using PowerPoint, so uh, I think I'm going to break it. So. Imagine if you have a triangle and you want to move it in a different state. If it was just one flat triangle, I don't have that many options. I can maybe translate, I can do this. But if, if it's phase delayed and it's rendered out of, let's say, 1,000 triangles, this uh, 1,000 particles, then each particle has a phase delay. And let's say that I have a sort of a feathering or a magnet effect with, where the, the interpolation between this state and this state is now a function of that as well. So what it would do is that it would make a spiral going outwards and then sticking with the previous version of the, of the triangle and then going back again. Now, you can combine this in very many different ways. It's, a, it's a, a really an extension of what triangle rendering could mean. But because we have so many particles, we can, we can do this and still look, when it's in, in solid form, look like an object. Then you can add lots of other things that other people can add what is the curly noise that gives it the more organic movement, or you can have uh, acceleration, velocity to make things jump or hit each other, or you can, you can generate your world using a procedural, uh, with other procedural means. It doesn't have to be uh, an object, it doesn't have to be a, a sphere, a, a, triangu a, a, a triangulated object. It could be, for example, I have a sea made out of curly noise that I'm going to show you. Later, you can have a landscape, you can have a, a 3D fill, you can... I'm using about 3 million particles, that should be enough to do many things. So, for example, for the random field, I can have an object... I can't think of any other object other than a human walking and the, and the sphere. <laughs> Let's say that you have a human walking, and then you, you want to make him disappear into a random star field. Because you have this phase delay, you can, you can make him disappear as a function of his height or a radial thing, so, so the guy just kind of swirls into, into a, a particle space in, instead of just a one-to-one -one interpolation, and that looks really nice. Um, once, you, once it's time for rendering, the one thing that we can change for a, a particle, a, a point sprite, is the size and the color, of course. So imagine that we have a music, our musician wrote a really nice piece of music at uh, 100 BPM. Now, I have this information in the shader. I have the time of the, uh, of the music. So I can, I can make a sign, and over 100 BPM, I can make it spike with some, some power calculation so it would look like a spike, like a heartbeat. And use that heartbeat inside the phase equation, inside the, the color and size control, to actually make things flash or make things move with the sound. And it works so well. So edge tracing is the, other, the second effect that I've been, I've been working on for this demo. And uh, I spoke uh, about the spin, our demo from, 
from 2011 that had this line, uh, the edge tracing over 3D models. The way that I did it back then was to get the 3D model, render it into a buffer, and then do edge, con edge uh, contour tracing so that I could trace the outline of a person running. Uh, it features a lot of people running and morphing into other things. So once I have this in spline mode, then I can interpolate between two things and make it look like uh, the story is progressing. But that was line tracing on 3D model. Evolution of Vision was a very, uh, I think 10 years ago we did this, uh, which was what can you do by analyzing RGB images. So there was a, an AVI playing in the background, uh, an RGB. RGB video, and then it was line tracing, all this image processing stuff happening in, in real time. So I said, what if we used some depth data that we can, we, we can capture using the Kinect that you know? And Mantis Vision is a, is a company I work with that does uh, depth cameras, and they seem to have a better depth resolution. So I have used both of them, actually, in, in our demo. There's a, there's a long sequence that has been filmed using <laughs> these, these cameras and the, the, the new line tracing that I'm uh, describing here. So the raw data for this is the depth map. So it's 16-bit depth map that gives you information how far away something is. OK. Then I had to develop an algorithm to do in painting, because you get a lot of holes with this uh, uh, kind of Z-buffer images. Uh, you get the holes because, uh, because of the, uh, the way it works. There are shadows uh, as the, the, the camera that reads the, 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 cam the, camera that, the camera that reads the IR image and the camera that projects the IR pattern, the way it works. They are, uh, uh, there's, there's a distance between them, so there is a natural shadow. And I wanted to remove that. So I made the, I made the program that covers this with what would have been there if, if it wasn't empty space. Now, if you do that, it would be very easy to say that I'm sitting in front of here, there is a background, I can detach the background because I know that the background is five meters away while I'm one meter away from the camera. So depth cameras are really good for segmentation. But, okay, so you do that, then, then you have this figure. What do you do with it? Just edge tracing around the edges is, is good, but it's not very interesting. If you take the sine, as in sine cosine, of the depth, then you start having iso contours. You, you will have, uh, take the sine of the depth multiplied to a really big value. So let's say my hand, viewed from here, would have a line here and here and here, because it's, it's moving in the z space, so the sine will go up, down, up, down, it will cross a zero. And that, especially on the human form, it creates some really, really organic and really nice looking images. So you, you can see people's breasts, uh, buttocks, you, you can see the head, the nose, you can see all of these things and rendering them, then that, that will give you a really nice effect. I'm going to show you how, what it looks like later in, in the demo tomorrow. Uh, so then, yeah, we take that. We, from now on, it's very easy. You convert the splines to 2D space, you normalize so that they are smooth. You remove noise. Uh, you can calculate normals from the depth map. So I can, I, can, I can smooth it, and I can find the gradients, and I can do a dot product so that, for example, I know that if light was there, then this area are going to look into the light more than let's say, this area. So I can shade this. I can shade this and I, I can shade this, the splines. They look really nice this way. Um, and then how do you render? You just have a, a, a thick billboarded spline with a, with a texture and you'll see. Also, frame rate is not really that crucial. Even if, even if the effect runs at 15 FPS, it still looks good because that the whole point is to look like it's uh, hand-drawn. Uh, I mean, the, what we are doing actually runs at a lot more, m more like 60 FPS. But even if it did, it ran at 15. The, the point is to fake the, uh, the 15, because uh, hand drawing looks good at 15 FPS, but it doesn't look at 60. So we can get away with quite a lot. Um, the problem, of course, is that, OK, we want to make a sequence, but we are not uh, a film studio. We cannot have a very elaborate, complicated sequence in depth space. So we, we would have to make 
to take many shots and put them together. So I need to write another program that will take a sequence where, let's say, I'm moving this way, and then another shot I'm moving this way, and then mix the two things at the, at the point where they meet. That's, that's quite hard. Th this part of the demo took quite uh, a long time to, to do, but although it doesn't look like it, when you see it, you will think, ah, oh, okay, that looks like a simple thing. But it did take quite a long, and I think this is a testament to how good an effect is. If it looks simple, because it looks straightforward, even though it wasn't. So we had these uh, two effects in, the, the building blocks, as I said. So we need to think of a story around it. And uh, one of the stories that I try to, I quite like. I, I, I like to have an avatar in our story. So you follow something, and that something could be an object or it could be something that evolves or something that runs away. If, if you've seen uh, our demos, you, you, will, you will notice it uh, quite a lot. And also leave space for uh, transitions, which are, let's say, our trademark. So we thought of something like uh, microcosmos to macrocosmos, so we see an evolution of something. You, you will discover what, what it is, but it, having this idea gives me the, the ability to think of a story and progress the story, I don't have to make a minute and then say, say, okay, I did the spinning cube, then another spinning cube, then it needs to go somewhere. That's why many, many people say that this is, this is all nonsense, that you need to have a story in demos. I think that this is the most important thing in demos, to have a story when you're making it, even if it's not obvious, because otherwise progress is very slow and very hard. I mean, what are you, what are you going to show over five, six, seven minutes. Because I don't have that much time anymore to make demos, I, it had to be also something that uh, we could do with quite simple modeling and quite uh, simple 2D graphics. Because one, one of the difficulties with, uh, with making a big demo is how you put things together from people that are also very busy, that they may, li may live in another country. And um, they are not always ready to, to do the work. So I cannot say to uh, my, my colleagues in ASD, I, I want five uh, big animated uh, boned uh, 3D humans. <laughs> because they will say, I'm sorry, I have many other things to do. I mean, it's, uh, or I will do it in two months, but then time is running out. So it had to be something that has simple modeling. And this is maybe something that you may understand being here, but not many other people outside the scene understand. They will say, okay, I see that you, you go into the movies and you see these big robots and big, big fancy modeling, and you say, why can't your demo or your, your demos have? Why, why you have uh, very simple models? And the answer is this, it's simple logistics. You, you cannot have these uh, very complicated models because they are very, very expensive to, to generate. And people who do that, if they don't do it for a hobby, they do it for a job and they get paid lots of money and they spend a lot of time doing it. So an, an additional difficulty to making demos is that you have very limited time and very limited resources. So watch demos by, think, by remembering that and thinking, well, this was made over, let's say, X amount of weeks on a very, very small budget and by three people who were working for nothing. So. It will not have the really big m models. It will not look like one of these uh, games that, that you play. Uh, but it's a different thing. It's a completely different uh, kind of a beast, completely different. But we have to stick to, to that concept, because I simply cannot make a story that, that uh, revolves around big dragons and the humans fighting and these, these sorts of things, because they need the resources. And I know that I don't have resources. I would be very lucky if I have two animating objects. So I need to have something that will generate geometry. Ideally, I would say the demo should be called um, geometry synthesizers, because they, they generate geometry out of nothing, out of procedural stuff. That's why many demos feature cubes and spheres and plasmas and this and because it's not that there are easy to be done fast, let's say. We have the skills, maybe, to do a bit more than that. And, and uh, other groups may present you with something that actually does it, the non-procedural pre-render graphics. But us, as, as ASD, we will never do it. It's, it's just impossible. And also, 
the way that I described before with the Kinect. I managed to get a, a large section of the demo actually pre-recorded using uh, everything I could find, which is my, my family and my, extend, my extended family. It's, uh, um, everybody had fun making it. As a demo, you understand it was quite more straightforward than uh, our uh, previous uh, demos from Assembly Life Force or uh, Happiness Around the Bend, which means that I had to spend a lot less time, so I was much happier because I didn't have to spend that much time. Because after, after a point, your hobby... If you have to spend so much time on your hobby that becomes a problem with your family, then it, you should stop. And I've done my time, let's say, making life force that almost killed me, or happiness around the bend that was like seven months of work, and I'm not going to do it again. So I think this gives a very good balance of effort and the final result. So, okay, back to more technical things. So how we, how we, we put everything. All of the parts, and there aren't that many, I think there are like six or seven parts of the, uh, in the demo blended together. They use a very straightforward pipeline, which is in C++, the code is very, very small. I think each part is something like 500 lines of code, and that's it. But all the, the juicy bits are in the shaders. The shaders are just a nightmare. If I see them, let's say, in one month's time, I cannot even recognize what I was doing. It's, it's, it's impossibly complicated. It, 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 it's not complicated, it's dirty, because I had to change so many things, little magic numbers, etc. So you have the particle engine that we describe, then you put a bit of ambient uh, god rays effect uh, uh, with ray marching. You can make some sort of a nice uh, cloudy space. And then on top, the uh, idealizing, there's some sort of ambient occlusion, some uh, color separation to make it look nice. And this is it. What makes it much easier, much faster to develop it is that we can reload shaders on the fly. Because this is all handmade. I don't want to compile every time I want to change something. Compile takes some seconds. I would rather just press a button and then it automatically reloads and just runs. And this is possible. So space, when you press space, all of the shaders are reloaded in my system. And I can have one run every two minutes. Change some things, then run again, etc. I can mix with the music. The music and the, the, the visuals don't happen at the same time. Almost always the music comes after the visuals, which makes it much, much harder for the, uh, for the musicians. But this is, this is the, the harsh reality. Um, but the musicians have to stick to the B B BPM. They have to stick to three uh, parts, and then we change something. They, they cannot make the, the perfect soundtrack to an existing uh, visual sequence. So how do we mix the two things? It's quite easy. You can, you can make a function that slowly slows down the demo and then speeds it up again as a function of time. So you have time controlling delta t. It works quite well. The idea is that the, the integral, that is the, the whole time, will be um, fixed in, under different frame rates. And that seems to work. So if a music makes something where it's music for one minute and then another music, and my visuals are one minute and five m seconds, and I just slow down them a little bit. Now, let's say that he has a, a sync point in the middle and then another sync point just before the end. And if I just slow down this part, they will never be synced. So all I can do is I can slow down in between with, again, with this sort of curve. And then they, they match quite magically. I get about a 10% more or less, give or take margin between, uh, between different events. And that, that you can never tell the difference. If you speed up something by 10% or slow it, it down, it's quite hard to, to see it. So with everything put together, I think it's six or seven parts, and we are running it. It's a big demo. It's like seven and a half minutes. Um, things that we can, uh, we can change on, uh, in a, on a post-processing -proce shader that are quite easy, that actually control the, 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 the flow of the demo is, for example, where even things like fades and the palette changes can happen inside the shader. We don't need to do this externally. So pretty much, I would say, apart from the very large-scale synchronization of the demo that is written in C, everything else is in, in GLSL shaders. And uh, something that helped me quite a lot, because 
I don't want to play the music with the daemon until I get to the right point. Is that I can I have a program that records the music and the time for individual parts. So when I want to jump somewhere, it knows where all the parts are. So it can sync things that are, have a different clock, and that works quite well. It, it makes so much easier for me to develop these things. Uh, again, uh, something I find quite important, that's why I mention it, uh, is that many demos come out, including ours in the past, of course, that actually work on NVIDIA, but they don't work on, on, on AMD. And um, it's, it's always good to have a rig where you can test both, both of them. And that was, that was something that I said, okay, this time we're going to get it, get it right. So, as I said before, many people tell me this is all bullshit, this is, uh, it's just all demos, and I think that this is, this is the wrong way to, to make a demo. Maybe it's the right way to watch a demo, thinking about but it's the wrong way to, to make a demo. And I think that you need to have a story, even if it's not very obvious, but you, you need to build some sort of mythology so that people know what, to, know what they're going to see and know what to, to expect. It, over the years, it works. And even if you're reusing elements, that's, that is still good in a way, in some ways, because this is part of building the mythology of your, of your group, of your, your universe, let's say. I think all groups have, have some sort of, uh, uh, of a universe. You know what to expect when you see a cocoon or a fairlight or an MFX demo, more or less. And that's the same with our group. That's uh, my final slice. Slide. It was a long process, but I enjoyed. I'm quite happy with the, the result, and uh, I'm, I'm saying that that there is there isn't really a right or a wrong way of making a demo. And this is just one my uh, side of things. You may have a completely different uh, opinion. I think that the the only rule that seems to work for everybody is that you need to make a start, and you have to keep working on it until it's done. You will never know until you try. And Obviously, you, it will never make you any money, but uh, it will make you happy. I'm going to show you now uh, a couple of uh, videos, maybe describing uh, what I was talking before. So the first video, I'm going to show you how an object, it's quite roughly rendered, uh, unfortunately. The quality is not really good, but uh, it, it's also part on, on purpose, because that, uh, that will make you come and watch the demo tomorrow. Uh, so the first one is the... Uh, it's a sequence of a bird flying, and the first is with uh, particles that don't have any uh, of that uh, phase difference uh, calculations in, and uh, another retake with that in, and it's, uh, it's, it's quite interesting. Ah. Okay. Let's... <laughs> oh, that's hard. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start from the beginning. Uh, so this is this this is without. It's it's just a, a, just just lots of particles and a bit. But look how now it's it looks like there is some sort of a wave behind the the wings, and that's that's only by changing one small value and the, and add, adding the curly noise. Um, This is, uh, this is a sequence that I made, it's uh, first using, it's all, all particles and all procedural uh, rendering, procedural generating of the terrain. Uh, so this is, this is a Z, Z buffer of it and uh, progressively I'm showing with uh, adding post-processing and adding, adding colors and adding uh, reflections and all of these things. Okay, and uh, I talked to you about the edge tracing, so I have a, a, a small clip. Uh, this is without color. This is a very early version, let's say, uh, of, of what it would look like. So, so a, a woman actually holding a real baby. I'll, I'll play it once, once again. Ah. 
you can see how the, the, the lines, the isoconduls fall on the, on the right, right places to make it look like it's edges and uh, you can see the hands. And, uh, it's a bit abstract, but it, it works quite well with the, um, uh, the right animation and the right colors. So I'm willing to take any questions that you may have about all of this. You can, you can ask me anything about uh, my demo or, or ASD if you want. Anyone? Hey, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, hey. My question is, are you planning to do a demo for a VR platform in the future? A, a VR such as, uh, let's say, Oculus Rift? Yes. No. I, I, no. Why not? I, why not? Um, I'm, I'm, the VR would be an experience, first of all, that you wouldn't share with other people. So we wouldn't be there watching uh, all together the same demo, let's say, because you would need to have the special glasses or whatever. Uh, the second is that I, th I don't think that the, the technology is still there, although it's very close. And the third is I just don't like people to change the cameras. So if you're moving your head, you are changing the camera. You're changing what I want to show. I want the camera to be as, as close to what I think is the right camera as possible. I don't want to see around the, all the cheats and the, the tricks that I do. Actually, the more interactive something becomes, the more I dislike it, in a way. It may, it, it, it may sound very dictatorial, but that, <laughs> that's how I feel. That's why I don't like making computer games anymore. It's like. I, I don't want people to look around. Also, they, uh, I, since I've been making demos since '92, and never I felt the need to change the platform. I think DOS first and then Windows, it's, it's fine. I, for me, it's like a computer is just a tool, whether it's an Amiga or a Spectrum or a PC, it's just a tool. It, 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 it means nothing. It's, I, I have nothing to gain from getting into a new platform, especially a platform I don't know. But it's, it's even the same for going into 64Ks and 4Ks. I, I, I don't care, basically, if it's small or if it's large or if it's slow or whatever. I just want to show something. Now, luck, chance made me uh, work with demos. I could be working with uh, a, a different way to express myself. I could be maybe a poet or I could be making films. But I'm very happy with what I have, which is 2D windows. And, and it's going to stay that until the end. Any more questions? Costas, thank you. Big round of applause for Costas. Thank you.